Kozlov was a Russian physiologist whose research focused primarily on digestive processes. Over the course of his study, Pavlov noticed that the dogs he was using to study salivated in response to non-food cues, such as the sound of footsteps or the ringing of a bell that signaled feeding time. These otherwise neutral stimuli elicited what is normally an automatic, reflexive response to food. He referred to this as a learned reflex, here using the term learning to describe a change in behavior as the result of experience. And he called this classical conditioning, learning that occurs when an association is made between paired events. Here's how it works. The process starts with an acquisition, the period in which a subject receives training about an association. A neutral stimulus, or NS, is paired with a stimulus called an unconditioned stimulus, or US, that normally elicits an involuntary automatic response called an unconditioned response, or UR. With repeated pairings, eventually the neutral stimulus will trigger the involuntary automatic response on its own, even when the unconditioned stimulus is no longer present. At this point, we would say that the neutral stimulus has become a conditioned stimulus, one that now results in a conditioned response, or CR. For example, a loud noise elicits an involuntary startled response. If a neutral stimulus, such as a flashing light, is repeatedly presented just before the sound, the light alone will eventually come to elicit the startled response. In other words, the person will come to flinch at the flashing light because the brain has learned that it means an ear-splitting sound is imminent. Classical conditioning works really well in the lab, but in the real world, environments are more complex, and many stimuli are often present at the same time. This can result in overshadowing, when organisms are more likely to form an association with highly prominent neutral stimuli than with weaker neutral stimuli that may also be present. For example, if a soft tone and a flashing blue light both precede a firecracker, Organisms are more likely to learn an association between the light and the firecracker than the soft tone and the firecracker. In generalization, stimuli similar to the conditioned stimulus also elicit the conditioned response. For example, a person who learned an association between a flashing blue light and a firecracker may also begin to flinch at flashing lights of other colors. Conversely, through discrimination, the brain learns to differentiate between stimuli that do and do not signal the onset of the unconditioned stimulus. For example, a firecracker may explode only after a blue light flashes, but never after a white light flashes. The blue light will elicit a startle reflex, but the white light will not because the brain has learned to distinguish between events that follow the lights. If the conditioned stimulus is presented alone repeatedly, without the unconditioned stimulus, this will result in extinction, when the conditioned stimulus loses the power to elicit the conditioned response. But sometimes after the association has been extinguished, it sometimes spontaneously reoccurs. If a person does not see a flashing blue light for a period of time, they may flinch when they see it again. This happens because the original learned association between the light and the firecracker never fully disappears. Classical conditioning plays a large role in many aspects of our lives. For example, in magical thinking, like when a baseball player wears the same socks for an entire season because the first time they wore them, they won the game. It also plays a role in the development of phobias. The first scientific demonstration of acquired phobias was conducted by behaviorist John B. Watson when he induced a phobia of a white rat to an 11-month-old infant nicknamed Little Albert. They did this by striking a hammer against a steel bar whenever the rat was presented to the infant. Prior to this pairing, Albert liked playing with the rat. After the pairing, Albert cried and attempted to crawl away whenever the rat was presented. Albert's fear also generalized to other similar stimuli, including the family dog, a fur coat, and a Santa Claus mask. Classical conditioning is also used in aversion therapy to eliminate undesirable behavior by pairing the behavior with an unpleasant stimulus. These pairings are continued until the undesirable behavior elicits an aversion, an intense dislike or feelings of disgust, even when the unpleasant stimulus is no longer available. It's used to treat everything from alcohol abuse to compulsive nail biting. Classical conditioning also underlies advertisements used to increase sales. Ads often display products in ways that highlight features that naturally elicit feelings of desire. For example, a fast food ad might show close up vivid pictures of appetizing food that trigger feelings of hunger. At the same time, viewers are repeatedly shown the company's logo. Over time, simply seeing the logo may cause people to experience hunger and desire. The result is that the viewer is more likely to purchase this product.